Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 19. The P Word, Part 2. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So, you're sitting in a slightly different position than usual? Yep. Why is that? Because we have a guest. And who is our guest today? My mother, Michelle Whalen. Hello, Mother Michelle Whalen. (laughs) Hi, everybody. (laughs) So, Mother Michelle is here uh, because we are dealing with Mama the Mama Purr Purr. Second part of our two part series here, which deals with uh, getting your period for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I think I am just going to sit back, run the board. I might ask a few questions, but I will try. I guess you're it. not an expert in this. Moment. I am by no means <laughs> an expert in this. Uh, but uh, just do a quick rundown of what you guys will be talking about. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about what a period is, what your menstruation, menstrual cycle is, some details on that. Uh, then we have some questions and answers to go back and forth with um, that are fairly common questions. Then we've got some interesting statistics on on periods to talk about. And then a little direct question and answer between uh you and I with Madison. Sure. And uh, then we will finish up with Madison's closing remarks. And uh, hopefully I'll push all the buttons the right way and put the right people on the screen because we're playing musical chairs here today. Yes, we are. (laughs) All right. Are we ready to get into it? Sure. All right. So I will turn it over to you, Mommy. (laughs) Sure. So... Let's just do a quick definition of what a period is. So your period is when you shed tissue, fluid, and blood from your uterine lining. It leaves your body through your vagina. Most girls and women, it usually happens each month and lasts between three and seven days. It may come as a surprise when you first get it, but that's okay because a lot of girls, you know, aren't really quite prepared. So does that seem like a quick quick overview of, of, of what it's like? I can definitely see it definitely sums up a lot of points about your period. Let me just say that. I mm-hmm. definitely think that's the main definition and there's nothing really need to say about it other than like basically all the things you need to change when Right. Well, let, well, that's just like a, a, a real quick definition of what it is. So I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit more detail just so you know and i'm sure you because you you went through you know the movie in in class and stuff and and more of the biology behind what it is that that's happening to to you and to me and and most women um that that go through this um so this will help you you know understand so the pre-ovulation is when, so females have two ovaries, or most women, because there are some that that don't, um, have two ovaries that contain thousands of eggs. Basically, all the eggs that you're ever going to need are already in your body right now. So, um, So the estrogen, which is a hormone in your body, tells your ovary to release an egg every month. So... Usually it switches sides, you know, one side one month, one side another month. So the, the egg releases, and at the same time, the soft lining called the endometrium 
of the uterus starts to thicken. That's when you might get some cramps kind of beforehand. Um, So then during ovulation is when the mature egg is released from the ovary and it travels through the fallopian tubes to that thicker lining. Now, if there happens to be sperm involved, which is the male reproductive cell, and the egg meet, then a baby would develop. Okay? Premenstrual is if the egg isn't fertilized, it starts to break down, and your lining actually will start to shed. And when the shedding happens, that's actually your period. It's just your body cleaning itself. Totally natural. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Sorry. So it, 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 it can be kind of scary, but that's basically what happens is that your body is thinking, oh, maybe, you know, it, it's basically your body's way of maybe somewhere down the line having a baby or if you never have you know, children, that's fine. But it's just the way that your body goes through the cycle to prepare itself. So that's actually what's happening throughout your body during a period. Okay? Pretty much. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. No, uh, honey, it, that, that is what's I, I know, I know. I just... <laughs> right. And it's a lot. Like when you think about, you know, it, it's kind of amazing that your body knows to do that and, you know, that it realizes, you know, as the egg goes, if it's fertilized or if it's not fertilized and, you know, that your body just kind of cleans itself and prepares itself, you know, for the next month. Mm-hmm. Um, so daddy, when he was preparing, you know, all of this data, he found some common questions um, from various different uh, websites. One was kidshealth.org, uh, uh, the American College of Obstetrics and uh, Gynecology, and, you know, kind of put together a little Q&A for us to go through. Um, so one of them is, when will my period start? When, when did yours start? Well, my period actually started when... In the summer when I was 11 years old, mm-hmm. actually not quite long ago. and So it's almost been a year now. It's almost been a year, mm-hmm. yes. And when I got, and it was shocking, I just want to say. Right, well, we, we kind of knew it was going to be coming soon. Yeah, I mean. We, we kind of knew that the different stages of puberty you you were starting to go through so we kind of knew this was the the next big one so it was a little bit of a shock of when it happened but we were we were a little prepared because we had actually um you know talked about it a little bit and i had and i had already seen the videos in school right and you had seen the videos in school which i think kind of help i think when you get it you're still that that still you still get that initial shock of it's finally, you know, oh my God, I finally got it. Um, And the same thing happened to me many, many years ago. I was actually 12 when I got mine. So not that much older, you know, than when you got yours. I was almost 13 at the time. And again, I had, you know, seen the the movies in school um, and it it was a shock. Um, Now, the relationship that I had with my mom was we really didn't talk about it as much. Now, um, she had supplies in the house for when I got it, but we hadn't really talked about it. We hadn't really looked through the things. It was kind of like, oh, here's your period. Here's your stuff. You know, so I think um, that we've been a little bit more open with it talking about it, not being ashamed to talk about it, mm-hmm. um, because it's a very natural thing. And and it's interesting to see through the years how, you know, how much more open people are to talk about it now than, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago even. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I think it's good that we have that that openness that we can we can talk about it. Um, so another question is how long do they last? 
Um, and according to this, um, sometimes it lasts a few days. So anywhere between two to seven days. Would you say that that's a, a fair fair assessment? Yeah, I would definitely say it. The first time I got my period, I think it lasted for four days. Mm-hmm. Now they last about a week or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of kind of normal. And some months, honestly, would you know there are some times when it lasts three days for me, and some where it lasts like eight days. So it really depends. Like you know, I don't have a, a set schedule, and and at some point maybe you'll have more of a set schedule, and and sometimes you won't. It's it's just your body's way of doing, yeah. you know, what it what it needs to do. Um, so then, of course, how often will you get your period is another common question. Um, and do you know what the the answer is to that? Monthly. Monthly. At least monthly. Right, and usually most women, most girls, most women have a cycle that's usually about 28 days between 21 and actually 45 days is kind of normal. Um, but sometimes, especially when it's very new to you, to, you know, to your body, it might actually take almost six years for your cycle to actually become regular. Now for me, when I was around your age, I actually, well, obviously a little bit older, um, I would actually go like three months without getting it. And that was just because it was my body's way of trying to get into a cycle. So, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, you got to have to, you know, give your body time to to adjust to, you know, to the the new schedule. Um, And it'll, you know, come whenever... (laughs) <laughs> whenever it wants to. Um, so one of the other things is, why is it a good idea to keep track of my period? And do you know why? Well, it's a good reason to keep track of your period because it might be able to help you whenever you get your period next. Right. It, this way you can kind of figure out when you're late or when you're early or if there might be a problem that you would need to maybe contact Uh, your doctor about. Um, So there's multiple ways that you can track your period. Um, And how do you keep track of it? Well, when I first got my period (coughs) and you were there, Mm -hmm. you recommended this one app that I use, and Mm -hmm. I've been using it ever since. Mm -hmm. That's one of the nice things of, of technology this day and age is that most people have a smartphone, and there are multiple apps out there for keeping track of it. Yeah, and I've been using it mm-hmm. since you taught me how to use it, mm-hmm. and it's actually been uh, quite an easy thing. And Right, and one of the nice things about it is it kind of lets you know when your period is over when you should be expecting to get your period again. And what it also does is after so many months of tracking, so it'll actually reevaluate when it thinks. So if, you know, you were 21 weeks one time or uh, 21 days one time and 45 days another time and 30 days another time, it'll actually average out and think, oh, we think this is when you're going to get, you know, your period next. And I use an app as well, you know, for mine as well, and it does the same thing. And it's funny because there are days when I just don't feel right, something feels off, and I'll actually look at the app and I'll see that my period is actually, you know, a couple of weeks away, and I realize that I'm going through PMS, and that's why I kind of don't feel like myself. So it's kind of interesting that your body kind of, tells you these signs and gives you these signs ahead of time and that, you know, oh, look at that. Um, Now, back in the day, (laughs) before Mm -hmm. smartphones, I actually had to use a calendar, and that's actually a a common way of of doing it um, for for most people, you know, that don't want to put it on their phone. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Am I keeping you up, sweetie? (laughs) No, no, no. Sorry. I know. It's been a long day for you. Um, so that's one of the, the things um, that you can do, too, is just mark it on a calendar. Um, and just, you know, you start an X for the first day of your period, and, you know, your last day is another X. And then you just can count off and kind of figure out when your next period uh, would be. Actually, that sounds kind of easy. Yeah, it really does. Um, so when you get your period... 
The next fun thing <laughs> is the different products that are out there to use. Now, back in the day, and this is even before, before you know, mommy, we're talking like grandma's time, they actually um, had something where you actually had to wear a belt and you wore it under your clothes and the belt actually attached to a pad. And that was how women protected themselves while they went through their period. But nowadays we have a lot more, <laughs> a lot more things out there. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of go through for, for the audience. So one of the things, you know, probably one of the most common things to use are pads. Um, and basically what it does is it, it, captures it, it soaks up your uh your menstrual flow and they're disposable and you just throw them out when you're done um then as we've talked there are tampons where though they are uh, usually cotton based and that's actually inserted into the body and again absorbs the blood and you take it out and you throw that out um then a while back there were, were new things that kind of came up, and one of them is called a menstrual cup. Now, that's also something that's inserted into the body, and that kind of helps to capture the blood, and that some of them are one-time use, that, you know, you take it out and you throw it out, or some of them are actually meant to be reused where you wash it out and use it again. One of the other things that have kind of... Um, come out more recently um, are underwear that can be worn during your period without having to wear any other protection because they're made of a, a thicker, more absorbent material. Um, and also there are companies that are starting to make reusable pads kind of being environmentally uh, savvy uh, nowadays. And that's why a lot of people are using the menstrual cups because they're um, recyclable. Um, reusable, so there's not the waste that goes uh, into the landfills um, with regular traditional pads. And so now there are different companies out there that um, are making these reusable pads and these reusable um, underwear as well. So another uh, question that came up was, how is a pad used? And um, like I had mentioned before, Back in the day, they didn't have a sticky adhesive. So, like I said, it was attached to, uh, you wore like a belt and you attached it and you would, you know, untach it. So, nowadays, pads have an adhesive and some of them even have wings, which we kind of know about yeah. too. <laughs> um, and basically the idea of the wings is that it folds over the edges of your underwear to kind of help from any, any leaks to help to protect your, your underwear. Um, and they make, as we know, <laughs> they make all sorts of sizes. Yep. Um, I remember really just one kind of size, maybe two, um, but now they make all sorts of sizes, all sorts of thickness, because not everybody has the same flow. Some people have very light periods. Some people have very thick periods. And what I kind of thought was interesting was I bought smaller ones for you, thinking that you, you would prefer those, but you actually prefer the larger ones. Um, you feel more comfortable having, you know, something larger and that's fine because it's anybody's you know preference there's fortunately there's enough out there there's a, a, a number of brands out there that there's kind of you know something for for everyone mm -hmm. you know something that uh you know kind of um you know to to help you feel comfortable and that's really the biggest thing is that whatever it is that you decide to use that it's because it makes you feel, you know, comfortable. Um, so how often should you change your pad? You should change it a couple hours a day. My schedule is 
two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not the same for everyone. You probably, people can also have other schedules. Mm -hmm. So, but my schedule right now is two and a half hours. Okay, and that's a good schedule to have. Um, usually I find for myself during the beginning of the week, I change it more often. And during the end of my cycle, I don't have to change it as often because I'm not, I'm not bleeding as much. Yeah, that's kind of how I do mm -hmm. it as well. Right. So you kind of, you kind of have to gauge it how it is, you know, for the week. Mm -hmm. Um, now, obviously not everybody, as we said, uses uses um, pads. There are some people that use tampons and there is a little bit of a health factor, you know, with, with using tampons. Um, they, they basically say with that, you should change it for at least every four to eight hours and never really leaving it in more than that because you, you can uh, get sick from leaving it uh, in longer. Um, and, and, you know, and it's on all the packaging. So, you know, if you're unsure, you know, obviously, you know, read the package uh, to, to see um, what's on there. And again, just like with, you know, what kind of pad should I use? You know, what kind of tampon should you use? There's various different kinds of, of tampons out there. Honestly, I've never used one, so I'm really not uh, an expert to say what kind, you know, you should use. And again, it's a personal preference. There are some women that that's all they use are tampons. They don't like using pads. And then there are some women who don't, want to use tampons so it, it's which it's, who are us who are we us <laughs> right and and that's okay there's there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing there's no right or wrong decision you know as to as to what you what you use um so um the menstrual cups you, you kind of cringed when <laughs> <laughs> when I mentioned it, yeah. and honestly, the first time I heard about a menstrual cup, I kind of did the same thing because it just didn't seem like it was for me. And and again, it's another personal preference. I I actually know a lot of women who love the menstrual cup. They some of them actually call uh, some of the brands are diva cups. Uh, that's some of you know what they're or moon cups. Um, and they actually prefer that more than anything else. So again, you have to feel comfortable with it. Um, you know, they, they say for them, they just feel like they have more uh, movement, that they're, they're not as restricted. Um, you know, my whole thing is being someplace where you can take it out and clean it. Um, you know, like, how do you do that in a public bathroom? And, you know, it, it's, you know, my mind starts, you know, thinking of, of other things and just realizing, yeah, that doesn't seem so easy. It seems <laughs> too much yeah. like work. I, I don't want to have to, yeah. you know, be, be working and, and doing, I just want to go change it and, and be done. But again, there are some women that that's, that's what they're into and that's totally okay. Um, so one of the other questions was, does having a period cause pain or discomfort? Yes, it does. <laughs> it, I mean, for me, mm -hmm. when I get my periods, when I first realize, oh, hey, I'm bleeding, I start getting stomach cramps. I mean, I'm not one of those people who have their cramps before their periods. I mean, I do get moody and I do have... Mm -hmm. discharge coming out of me mm -hmm. but other than that there's nothing really that can help me sense when I'm having my period mm -hmm. but when it happens I start my stomach pretty much hurts I've actually already been through it multiple mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. but and like sometimes when you're sitting down and it gets a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I remember the first few times I had my period always Feeling the gushing blood coming out of you didn't feel comfortable. Right, right, and it, and it's a when you're not used to it, it is a very weird sensation. You kind of don't feel right, but you're not really sure. But yeah. then after you kind of get used to it, you're like, oh, okay, it's and, just and that's so, just a bodily function that 
you know, everybody else is, you know, all the other women, you know, are, are going through. It's not uncommon. Yeah, and also um, some women might get their cramps before their period. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So, you know, and, and usually when you're getting cramps, it's sometimes um, your lower abdomen, which is, you know, near where your fallopian tubes are. Um, sometimes it can be your back, you know, basically from, from the same area, depending on, on where it is. Um, some of the discomfort that you might get are, um, is tenderness in, in your breasts. And that's actually something that, that I get. That's, that's kind of how I know my period is coming. It's, it's one of the little telltale signs where I, it it hurts, you know, to take off my bra or to put on a bra. Um, or if I bump into, you know, something, it, it, I, I get the, the tenderness, um, usually, you know, right before and sometimes even during. Um, there are some, some girls and some women who actually will get headaches or feel, you know, dizzy um, or even get nauseous because of, of um, the cramps that they're, they're getting. Um, so what is PMS? Have you heard that term? No. So PMS is actually P- premenstrual syndrome, PMS, that's what it stands for. Mm. And it refers to the symptoms that some girls and women experience one to 14 days before their period, which is what we were kind of talking about, where you were saying you actually get some of the symptoms dur- during your period. Um, so these symptoms are caused by changing uh, the changing hormone levels, um, and they can include, like we were saying, headaches, backaches, food cravings when somebody wants some chocolate, um, or depression, or moodiness, because we don't know anybody that gets moody. Nope. Um, <laughs> or again, the breast tenderness, um, pain in your joints. You were saying the other day how, you know, your, your legs were bothering you, and you were thinking maybe it was a growth spurt. It could be a sign of, of PMS. Um, a general tiredness. You know, there are some, some days when we're just really extra tired. Um, or feeling um, bloated or a weight gain. And that's, I definitely notice that usually right before my period that I kind of get bloated. My rings don't fit right. My clothes don't fit right. Um, and sometimes people even notice getting uh, skin blemishes. Um, and I'll even get pimples on my face from time to time, usually right before. Um, so that's part of my PMS cycle. So, so everybody's different. Um, but I know you go through a a couple of these, you know, different, uh, (laughs) different things, uh, right beforehand. Yeah. So cramps. Now you said you normally get cramps usually during um where i usually get my cramps usually you know in the beginning and what are some of the things that that i've done for you to help you with your cramps well what did we do this morning before you went to school um you took some medicine oh yeah we took some medicine (laughs) you took some pain medicine and that's actually a a very common thing is to to just take some some tylenol or, or motrin which is what we did uh, another thing that they kind of suggest doing is, you know, if the cramps are really bad, to put a heating pad, you know, on on your on your belly. I've never actually tried it because my cramps usually haven't been, you know, been too bad. Um, and yours haven't been, you know, too bad, you know, for the most part. Um, so one of the other questions is, what if I'm having heavy bleeding? Um, so this is something that fortunately we've we've never had to deal with um but just to let our our viewers know that you know if you're changing your pad or your tampon um every one to two hours or your period is lasting more than seven days you you probably should contact your doctor um and it might not be anything serious um but you definitely you know want to see a doctor uh, right away if you're lightheaded dizzy or if you have a racing pulse because it could be something something more serious um but if you know things don't seem you know you know seem as normal you know then obviously nothing to be concerned about yeah um so irregular periods and i know you know again being kind of new with it you're, you're still, you know, coming, coming into your cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the beginning, your period may be irregular. 
you could have one period and then wait as long as six months for the next one. Now, you haven't had to, to wait that long, but I think there was one time where it was a couple of months yeah, it was in act- between. It was actually after I got my first period mm-hmm. and then three months till I actually got my second one. Right, and that's totally normal. So, you know, and you might even still you know, get a period where it just lasts one day, or you could get a period where it lasts 10 days. Um, And this happens a lot for girls and even some some women. Um, Oftentimes it takes a a girl's body, you know, it it takes a a couple of cycles, a couple of years to actually get into a regular, you know, a regular routine. Um, And again, if you're concerned about anything, if something just doesn't seem right, obviously, you know, call a doctor um, to, to get checked out. Um, so some interesting statistics that Daddy found regarding periods where some of them, I don't know, they seemed a little bit to be a little, little wives tale you know. Hey, I look, I list my sources. I don't make these up. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of the few times Daddy talks in this podcast. <laughs> To defend myself. Right, yeah. right. So one of the things that, that Daddy found was getting your period can worsen asthma symptoms, which that totally baffled me. And if, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because you get swelling. True. And asthma is an inflammation in your lungs. True. I could definitely so. see that. Um, That's how I'm explaining it, at least. Uh, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, sleeping with a nightlight can help regulate your, your cycle. Um, light exposure affects the secretion of the sleep hormone, um, which helps control the release of the female reproductive hormone that depend on when your menstrual cycle begins and ends. So I think these are more, li- are more like fun facts than statistics. <laughs> Fun fact, if you want to regulate your period, <laughs> put, on a, put on a nightlight. Put on a nightlight. The sound of your voice changes during your period. Yes, because when you get your period, you get angry. Really? No, 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 no not really. No, mommy. I, I, I've <laughs> never noticed my voice changing, but again... Have you ever noticed my voice changing? Well, you're kind of at that stage where... You, you know, every day you sound a little different, but I don't know if it's because of, you know, you just changing or, you know, just kind of, you know, normal. But maybe, again, it goes with the whole you're swollen, maybe your vocal cords or your, you know, your your neck is swollen, so you sound different. Mm. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Sure. Um, another fun fact or statistic um, is that the average woman – the average woman has more than 400 periods in her lifetime and that between the average woman's cycle and menopause, she could expect some 450 cycles. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. (laughs) And, and that's why a lot of women are starting to use different types of products during their period because they know they're going to have it so many times throughout their lifetime. And that's a lot of, of waste to, you know, to have to try and, and find a home for because it's not really, you know, leads into the next fact that Mm -hmm. you could go through 15,000 period products in your lifetime. Can you imagine how much waste that does generate? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's monumental. Right. And like I said, that, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of different companies pop up. Um, You know, I know I use Thinks as, (laughs) as, you know, the, one of the, the go-to brands. Um, I can't remember the, the brand uh, for the kids, version but there's like at least five or ten different companies out there that are are starting to to make washable reusable products which you know it really does make sense so you said one of the things that you didn't like was it felt like you were gushing blood when you know in reality uh on average the average woman loses about 60 milliliters or about 2.7 ounces which is significant but it's probably less than you actually realize. Yeah. Now, do you do you know how much like 
2.7 ounces is. Fluid ounces? Mm Mm-hmm. It's less than a cup. Right. I was going to say, when you drink your a can of soda that's 12 ounces right there but yet it kind of feels like you know each period you're losing a whole lot more right. when really in actuality you're you're not really losing you know all that much yeah. and it wouldn't be a podcast with your mommy if we didn't have a disney <laughs> time would it? well thank you i appreciate that and and this was actually news to me when when i was reading over your notes that that back in the 1940s disney actually made a movie about periods and uh, it was called The Story of Menstruation, and it was actually funded by Kotex, which is a very popular brand of female uh, pr- products. Um, and essentially, it was um, a, a movie for tweens that told them about, you know, the what was going to, you know, be happening to their, their body soon. It would be funny to, to see if we could find... Uh, you know what? Find with, it on YouTube. With YouTube, I'm sure it's probably <laughs> out there. That would be interesting. Maybe we can post it on our. Maybe we can post it on our YouTube. We'll have to. Show. Well, yeah, we'll have to see if um, we uh, we can find it. So you didn't. You obviously don't like the concept of a tampon. Nope. Would it Would it surprise you to know that the first tampon patent was actually filed by a man? Clearly someone who doesn't use right, the Right, someone who would never use one was the one that invented it. <laughs> hmm. Back in 1931. Yeah, in 1931, the first patent for, for a tampon was introduced. But actually, 1921, which really wasn't all that long ago, um, was when the first disposable pad was, was sold. Um, and it was basically packaged in a plain-wrapped, unidentified box because nobody really wanted to talk about it and basically a a woman would put money you know on the counter and they would just kind of slide like it it was some kind of illegal transaction (laughs) right and and the sad thing is and and we've talked about this before is that in some countries it's still kind of seen that way um there's a very good documentary which might not be such a bad idea for for you to sit down and and watch and appreciate um, that w- that was done um, in India and and talked about there there are girls who because they would get their period and didn't have access to feminine protection who would have to drop out of school or wouldn't go to school on the days that they had their period. And because they would miss so much school, because you figure four to seven days a month, they would get left behind or they'd end up having to drop out of school. All because they didn't have something to wear to be able to go to school while they had their period. So there are a couple of women who kind of went into some of these towns in India and actually showed women how to make them. And actually, these women started producing them because the other thing, too, is you can kind of find pads to buy, but they're very expensive and they're very hard to find. And a lot of women, again, are ashamed, which and this is something that no woman should ever be ashamed to to have to find or buy, you know, feminine protection and they basic there there are these this organization that went in and basically empowered these women to start earning a living for themselves making pads and basically they became kind of door to door saleswomen and they would go to visiting um, neighboring towns with these pads selling them a lot cheaper than the brands that you could get in the store and they were made by other women yeah. And in, and it empowered them to be able to, you know, like these younger girls to actually go to school and and finish school all because they had something to wear when they had their period. So as much of an inconvenience as having a period is to you, as you've expressed, you can imagine people elsewhere have it a lot harder because they don't even have access to the basic supplies that you have access to. 
Now imagine going through the day without without being able to change that pad every two and a half hours. I can't mm-hmm. imagine what it would be what, what it would be like. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So you're you're very fortunate and very lucky to to live in a time and in a place where it's easily accessible, um, where you're not chastised <coughs> for having to to go to the restroom, you know, to change it throughout the day either. You know, it's just, it's a normal thing, and that's how it should be. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. And it's a bodily process. It's mm-hmm. like breathing or having to go to the bathroom. It's mm-hmm. like you have no control over it, so no one else has any right to tell you how you go about doing that. It's, it's just, it's natural. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. One of the other fun facts that, that Daddy found was that during your period, researchers in the U.K., have found that more money is spent by women while they're on their period. I can never and see not that. just on supplies. And not I just on, on I can supplies. see that. I can see that. <laughs> that basically the impulse to to shop kind of comes out while we're while, while we're having our our cycle. I which would I would be curious to know how much. Uh, is chocolate chocolate is, is purchased <laughs> that's what i'd that like to know too. is is you know where's the the hershey's yeah. and the I, reese's yeah, I, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't find you know, a statistic that, that's that. where i want to know daddy that would be so fun though. that would be <laughs> fun. I, that would be neat to know so th- this next one i totally disagree with um it says that your period probably isn't syncing up with your roommates or your friends that run researchers uh, monitored the cycles of 186 women living in the same dorm for more than a year, they found that their periods didn't sync up at all. I totally think that's false. Yeah. Well, I, in their defense, <laughs> they have a slightly larger sample size than the sample size of two that you've got. Right, but I'm not saying that it's just two. I lived in, you know, in a, in a dorm in college and... And an apartment in college, and more times than not, we were kind of within. You know, it wasn't like one was one week, one was another one. You know, we I, were. You know, I don't think it's overlapped. impossible, but no, there's no. nothing from a a hormonal thing. There's, right, you're not. It's not like you're giving off some kind of scent that's triggering it. It's but if nothing. you ask another woman, they will say that they sync up with, with other women. So. And well, and that's <laughs> that's why you're here, sweetheart. Right, I'm not exactly. an expert, so I'm so not this was probably argue. done by by some men. So we exactly. don't we don't want to. Exactly. Yeah, we're not so, gonna pay that much attention to it. I'm I'm not gonna, just gonna argue. We're gonna label it false. It's it's false. There you go. <laughs> right. Well, False like, information. Like Mythbusters, you know. So so I think that's it for the fun facts. Let's come sure. back with uh, some questions and answers. Sure. And then uh, we'll let Maddie uh, finish with her closing remarks. Sure. So there was just some questions that I had here. And you've answered some of them already. But I think just for the sake of, of clarity... We'll ask this, the questions again. Um, and the first one we've, we have talked about, how old were you when you started your cycles? I was 11 years old, like I said before. Okay, well, thank you for re- reiterating that. <laughs> yeah. Mommy, I'll, I'll leave the rest of the questions to you. Uh, sure. So the next one is, how do you cope with the discomfort associated with your cycle? Well, I've had my period for multiple, multiple times now, mm-hmm. and I've... I know that when I start bleeding, I know, like, the immediate day, once I start becoming heavy, it starts getting uncomfortable, or I start my cramping, Mm -hmm. but I kind of cope with it. I mean, yes, of course, when I first get on my pad after a couple couple of weeks without wearing it, it does get uncomfortable, feels like I'm wearing a diaper, still Mm -hmm. feels like it, but, I mean, I've had it multiple times to know how it actually feels. I'm getting used to it now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let me follow that up with when you feel, like you've talked about the discomfort, the cramps and so forth. When you feel the discomfort, do you take medicines for it? Do you soak in a tub? Like what do you do to try to compensate or to try to um, uh, get past the cramping? Well, the only thing I really do is basically taking 
medicine. I don't actually sit in a warm bath, even though that does help whenever I have to, whenever I take, I have my shower. It's nice to have it nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Definitely helps me get rid of the pain. Also, I noticed eating food. It takes my mind off of it, and apparently it doesn't actually hurt as bad. Oh, there's certain foods that are better? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, when I had my period, I noticed after, like, I had my stomach cramps that when I was eating, when we had snack at school, I actually felt better, and okay. my stomach cramps weren't as awful. And when you take medicine, what medicine do you typically take? Pretty much Tylenol and pain medicine. Is it is it acetaminophen? Is it ibuprofen? What ibuprofen, What's is, ibuprofen is the recommended? Yeah. So that's the the common brand mm -hmm. is Motrin for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Next question, mommy. Um, how does it affect how you treat other people around you? Well, honestly, it does. I don't really treat people differently with my period, but before my period, I do get tend to get a bit moody. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that was mommy poking the cage. Yes. And and I get I get the same way where there are times when I don't realize I'm being moody and it's not until after the fact that, you know, and I apologize when I realize that, you know, I'm kind of being a little bitchy. You know, and it's mommy language. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to watch this I'm podcast to beat on YouTube. That out now. Thanks. I won't. <laughs> Thanks for making post production more difficult. I probably won't. I will probably won't be able to watch this. Stop. You're Stop. fine. But yeah, it's it's just one of those things where you just you know it, you don't realize the the way that you're feeling, and it's because it's it's part of the the hormone. So. Um, and the final question is, what activities do you avoid or can't do as a result? Well, I get a little tired when mm -hmm. I'm in my period. Unfortunately, now we're, we had actually had field day today, mm -hmm. but I was actually going through my period today. And did you find that you couldn't do anything? Yeah, I, I found, well, I didn't, I couldn't do anything just that I didn't have a lot of energy. Like, okay. When we went on the inflatables, I realized I could only do it once because I because like already halfway through the first time I was I was like completely exhausted. Okay. And again, I was outside the entire day and I was having my bodily function effect. Right, and that could have also just been because of it, it being warm, not necessarily because there are some people that find that when they have their period, they're actually more active. Um, or that doing more activity kind of helps um, and kind of helps the cramps, um, you know, by being more active. Um, but one of the things, you know, is that there's nothing that you can't do, you know, that your period shouldn't stop you from doing things that you enjoy. So if you like sports or you're a dancer or, um, you know, you're active in, in other things, that having your period really shouldn't stop you from, you know, doing the things you enjoy or going out. Um, you know, obviously, if you have cramps and, and you're not feeling well, you know, that's one thing. But you shouldn't let your period dictate you, you know, doing things that you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we cut to the last segment here, did you have any questions for Mommy about the subject? Um... Well, I just want to ask this one question. Do you ever tend to be more addicted to foods and less addicted to certain foods that you would be ad that you would mm -hmm. enjoy? Yep, it's funny that usually right before my period or sometimes during my period, I tend to crave saltier foods. Um Things that, you know, like popcorn or pretzels or, or just adding extra salt to things that I normally wouldn't. Um, and sometimes I go through uh, like a sweet um, cakey phase. Um, so I, I really don't get the chocolate uh, craving a, as much, but definitely I can see um, the way, you know, I, I crave certain things, you know, throughout the month. And I also see how it affects my body because 
when I'm craving all those extra salts, I'm extra thirsty and I kind of get bloated because I'm, I'm retaining water from the extra salt. And I can actually relate to that because I have the exact opposite problem. I do not like salty things. Like when we have potato chips at aftercare for snack and whenever I try to eat them having my period, I just think they taste disgusting. Like, and that's like, even totally the smell normal. Makes me gag mm-hmm. inside. Like yeah. I feel like gagging, mm-hmm. like throwing up. Yeah, that's that's a total normal thing, and that kind of you know relates to um, pregnancy and different cravings that that people go through. You know, during during pregnancy. You didn't it, crave anything when you were pregnant, though, sweetheart. <laughs> really. Really? What did I crave? I don't know. I you blocked that entire period were, out of my you memory. You were so upset because you were waiting for the ice cream and the donuts, and I was craving. Or like pickles and like pickles no, I really wasn't. tomatoes or something. No, it was just tomatoes. Tomatoes yeah. and oranges and grapefruits. That's what I was craving. And you were like, where's the ice cream? Yeah, like, when are you craving the ice crave cream? Crave something I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was craving an avocado. Remember, I was craving avocado. Yeah, <laughs> Gee, avocado. and and who likes avocados and tomatoes? Yeah. Hmm. Mm, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. All right. Did you have any other questions for mommy? I think that was pretty much it. Okay. All right. I think that's it for what we had to present today. Uh, let's uh, come back, and you can do your closing remarks and your shout outs. I turn it over to you, Madison. Well, for my closing remarks, I just want to say for any women who are my age and haven't gotten their period yet, just make sure you are aware of it and know a bit about a bit of background knowledge about it. I also recommend having people who care about you a lot and who will help you through this di- this difficult time. And um, make sure you're prepared. And for people who are going through your period, it's it's definitely natural. Don't be ashamed about it. It's the most natural thing any woman will ever go through. And um, I hope that you are able to cope with it as much as I have. When I first started, I wasn't cope. I didn't cope with it too well. But luckily, I adapt pretty quickly. I'm not like everyone else. My schedule is not like yours. You'll probably have a different schedule, but just some ways to cope would be nice for you. All right. Any shout outs today? Well, I would mainly like to give a shout out to our guest, Mommy. Aw, thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Daddy. (laughs) What do you think we could do? (laughs) Mommy saved me on this one. I don't think I could have did this one. (laughs) Yeah. So I just want to thank you for being there to support me and helping me through the difficult time I've had with it. I also want to thank you for all the useful information you have been able to pass down on to me. And I'm glad you are not like my grandma and have kept it inside and say, well, you got your period. Here's your supplies. Then enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that is it. Uh, we'll bring this two-parter to a close. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we did a uh, fantastic job. And we'll be back next week with another great podcast. See you, everyone.